Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Last time we had our ill-fated uh, <laughs> spacewalk and landing, or lack thereof, of Jebediah Kerman. Rest in peace, Jeb. Uh, today we've upgraded to Uller 4. Uh, we've got a liquid fuel engine in here now and our three solid boosters. Uh, we've got Valentina and we're just gonna go. Um, so the point of this one is we're going to try to use the liquid engine to slow our descent so we don't turn into just a, a bullet on, on re-entry, which is, you know, the current plan anyway. So we're going to get up in space, we'll take some data, and we will survive. Valentina, this is uh, her second flight. She was on Uller 2, Jeb was on Uller 1, and Uller 3. So hopefully uh, Valentina's second flight isn't also uh, <laughs> death for her. And here we go, our solid fuel is out and away. So it's gonna kinda whew, spin off. These will we'll knock over. Get you to half throttle. And we'll get us into space. So we're just going to burn, so you can see how our orbit is elongating as we push out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to do about half a tank of fuel. And now that we're kind of, once the space music kicks in, which it will shortly. There we go. Go ahead and do our materials study. Cool. Microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose objects are also flying around the bay in a very messy but fascinating way. So these are, this is important data, right? So this science will help us get out of, you know, Kerbin's gravity well. Goo seems to have clumped into a sphere and come, become brittle. Okay. So I'm only going to do one of each of these experiments, I believe. Uh, yep, cooled and recorded because I want to be able to collect data uh, from the ocean when we get there. I don't think this is going to count as high over Kerbin, but let's go ahead and do a crew report. Crew report. While in space near Kerbin. Yep, this seems we're very much in space. Sky seems to be mostly below us. Here we go. Go ahead and go EVA real quick. And I just need to do an EVA report from just above Kerbin's water recorded our observations, and she's going to go back inside. Okay. So, uh, SAS is a uh, stability assist system. Uh, RCS, I'm not actually sure. Rotational control system, I believe. But these uh, allow me to, as Valentina as the pilot, and me, therefore, as the pilot, able to kind of direct the spacecraft to go in a retrograde, so that way the engine's pointing you know, the nose is pointing retrograde, so that way we can slow down. Um, or we could go to anti-normal, normal, radial. Most of this stuff is, is used for, like, docking or landing procedures. Uh, and in this case, yeah, landing was what we kind of want. <laughs> We're going to be landing pretty hot, hot and heavy. Uh, hopefully we can get this done easily without, uh, without getting killed. Or at least without getting Valentina killed. Yeah, here you go. Here's a good shot of the, uh, the Mun and the galaxy all the gases and stars in the in the arm of the maybe milky way i'm actually not sure what the galaxy is called in kerbal space program and man i you know i can't wait for kerbal space program 2 because then you'll be able to explore other solar systems so in this kerbal space program it was kind of developed by a small team and you know it was an alpha for a very very long time and you can only do you can only explore this uh, this system, right? This planetary system. But in Kerbal Space Program 2, you're going to be able to explore multiple systems. And of course, the gas giants are going to have uh, rings in the in Kerbal Space Program 2, and it's going to be multiplayer, which is mm, primo. That's what I want. I want multiplayer. I would love to be able to shoot rockets at my friend's satellites or work together to form a an inter intergalactic or I guess intragalactic uh Kerbin Empire. 
that would be very silly, but we could do it. Uh, so, you know, that's something to look forward to, hopefully in 2021. If not, then early 2022. It was supposed to come out in, uh, you know, the spring of 2020, but uh, we all know what happened with 2020. So we just we just don't discuss 2020. <laughs> it wasn't the uh, the greatest time in in history, was it? All right, let's go ahead and activate our thrusters a little bit. It's just enough to slow us down on this reentry. We just slow down a lot. Whoa. So as long as we continue the burn, as long as Valentina is a good pilot and maintains that retrograde, and if it comes to it, we can kind of do a full, forceful burn. Uh oh, okay, we're at 10,000 meters. So it slows down, slows down, slows down. We're going way too fast. those drogue shoots on, and that slows down the rest of us. So the engine's broken away, he's gonna little that, that little dot down there, and here we go, and now it's the slow descent down to the water, but I would prefer that, you know, uh, I, I respect Valentina, you know, obviously I care for her because of all these drogue shoots and, and shoots and whatnot to keep her alive, so go ahead and open this guy. And we'll get we'll get new pressure uh, data when we're in the water, and that will be in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Even at four times speed, we're only going four meters per second, so we're not we're not descending very quickly. So it'll take it'll take a little while to get to the bottom of the the water here. And slow it back down. 50 meters to go. Maybe. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. And splash down. Okay. And oop. so we won't be able to get Valentina out here to do a port because she might drown. So I'd rather not do that. Uh, from Kerbin's Water. There we go. Seven science. Uh, we need this guy. Yep. From the water. Uh, and this guy as well. Observe. The goo escapes into the water. I don't know. You know what? Go EVA anyway. We'll take a surface sample. Taking a sample of the water. Dramatically increase the surface humidity of anything it touches. Weird, huh? And bored. Okay. Good job, everybody. We're going to go back to the tracking station and collect Valentina. Alright, recover. Yes. Whew. We got 140 science out of that, so great, great work, everybody. Valentina's back and alive. So now, we can actually probably start using... We can probably start using drones and, uh, you know, automated systems to get us where we need to go. So, let's see what we need to do for that. So this is all rocketry stuff. Uh, general construction, aviation, flight controls are important. Advanced flight control. I'm also going to get that. But that's 90. Yikes. Space exploration. Yes, for like rovers and work lamps and cargo. Repair kits. You know, these are important things, but not right now. Miniaturization. EVA experiments kit. Oh, that's kind of cool. Hmm. Interesting. We've got new parts. Uh, electronics is kind of going to be what we're going to need. So uh, the Octo is unmanned control technology. That's going to be huge. Uh, mostly, mostly for it's kind of octagonal, and we, we can put stuff on the sides of it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to grab that. We have 18 science left. That's plenty. Uh, next big thing, I mean, precision engineering is cool. So relay antennas are awesome. Uh, miniaturization, that would be cool for these EVA experiments. Space exploration. So right now is we're going to go ahead and begin our relay satellites. 
So our relay satellites, right? They're gonna be probodynes. Uh, we do ba do ba do ba do. All right, so they're just octagonal blocks. It's not meant to come back. So we're gonna put this thing into a high orbit. We're gonna throw some comms antennas on it and be done with it. So first thing, right? Reaction wheels. Reaction wheels help help the aircraft spin around and, and you can take control of the spacecraft from here. So we'll keep building it. Uh, you know, there's not no nothing really here that we really need. We can actually even leave the engines on. Uh, we don't have to just drop the probe. I mean, that would be better for everybody if we did that. So we're going to do that. We're going to put a surface bay on here because we need to stick batteries in here. Uh, just in case. Aerodynamics, it, it, mildly important. You know, I'm gonna stick a nose cone on it. <laughs> it looks kind of goofy, uh, but this way, at least, you know, as we go up into space, we don't. It it pushes the air around it, so we don't just break stuff off. We're not gonna need a heat shield. We're not coming out there. Uh, we don't need thermal control systems, right? Because we're not getting too much heat. I would hope. Rechargeable battery banks, of course. Uh, this way we have plenty of life uh, here. Now this one, right? We need to have at least a solar panel getting light from every direction. At least most directions. These are just stationary panels. It's not great. But that's okay. We got some high gain, ugh, high gain antennas, which don't look great. <laughs> they look kind of stupid, actually. Um, so let's just go with the communitrons for now. Because we don't really have any good place to put these. Kind of sadly. Hmm. And what we can do is we can actually rotate these. So this is the guy I want to rotate. I just want to... Well, that doesn't work, does it? Nope. <laughs> so they'll just kind of stick out through the, the solar panels, which is, which is fine. It's just going to look ugly, that's all. And then, you know what, we'll put the communodrons, these little guys, just in case. So, you know what, and, and we can't waste a probe, right? It doesn't make sense to waste a probe. So, we're going to go ahead and put science on board. So, we'll put some uh, barometers, we'll put some mystery goo, we'll put our thermometers on board. You know, all, all things to help us study what's around carbon. Uh, you know, we could put a science junior up there. It's a pretty big payload. So I'm not going to do that on this one. So we'll just close the bay. We've got battery packs. We've got uh, all that stuff. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do... We'll go ahead and decouple. We'll have a coupler here. So we can decouple our engine when we get there. We'll, we'll be using liquid fuel. That way we can actually uh, orient to where we want. But for our launch phase, we're going to be madmen about this. We're going to use four, count it with me, four of these heavy-duty thumpers. That should be excessive enough to get us into into space. <laughs> it may actually blow up our, our ship here. But uh, why the hell not? Why not? Let's, let's try something different. Let's be Let's just be different, you know? There's nothing nothing wrong with that. Spotlights. Okay. I mean, we don't need spotlights. But, uh, that's okay. You know what? We'll do that. Just so we... Just in case we don't run into anything. Uh, in the future. <laughs> yeah. We'll just put the spotlights there. Why not? So, uh, a cool messenger of the Norse mythology is Ratatoskr. Ratatoskr is a squirrel. Uh, he runs around the branches of Yggdrasil, and he brings messages between uh, an eagle and a dragon. Uh, the eagle's in the top branches of Yggdrasil, and the eagle doesn't like the dragon at the bottom gnawing on the roots, uh, Nidhogger. And um, Ratatoskr will run down there, and essentially he'll just talk crap, talk smack between uh, Nidhogger and the eagle. So this will be Rata Tusker 1. That way we can communicate. 
in the future with other uh, devices that we throw into orbit. So we're going to start with four uh, rockets, fuel ones, uh, solid fuel, that gives us 1900 meters per second. And then that liquid fuel, which also gives us 1900 meters per second. So we should have plenty of gas for where we're going. Okay, we've made it to the launch pad. And see, so now we don't have a pilot and we don't have an, uh, a, a system of being able to really control where we want to look. So we've just got the stability assist. So we're just going to go up until we get into some semblance of or orbit. And we'll go from there. So already we've got some shaking and wobbling. But that's because of the air. But it's not too bad. We're rolling a little bit. Got too much roll. It's fine. You can control that. So in the bottom left, you can kind of see the roll, the pitch, the yaw of what the ship is trying to do. We are almost out of fuel. And man, we are hauling. We are really getting up there. We're really heating up. <laughs> Just pop those bad bad boys away. Whoa, whoa, and we're gonna talk. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> so maybe we shouldn't have popped those bad boys off. Uh, <laughs> well, let's just let's just watch. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot down like a bullet and blow up in the atmosphere. I hope. <laughs> so let's just let's just let's just warp there. We know it's gonna actually. We can we can get some we can get some science while we're up here. Why not? We'll send it back with what little we can do. Uh, nope, so nothing valid here. We've already done that pressure scan. Uh, nothing valid here. We've already done that. And nothing valid here. So nope, we can't do any experiments. So we're just going to launch it into the ground. It's not going to not gonna survive re-entry. We know that. Whee! <laughs> it's not going to survive landing, at least. <laughs> Yep, it's gonna be like a bullet if it doesn't overheat. <laughs> I'll be surprised if it doesn't overheat. That's what it looks like it's gonna do. Uh, what? Really? Wow, we. Huh. I'm impressed. Well, let's just, um. Uh oh. That was all the other engines exploding somewhere. Let's just. Let's just finish this. We know it's not going to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. So putting a spin on it, maybe not the best idea we've ever had. <laughs> How very silly. It's so lightweight that it just kind of tumbles. And into the ground we go. Goodbye, Ratatasker 1. So all, all that we screwed up on that one is that we broke our, our larger engines away too soon. And... Splash! Holy crap, the... the <laughs> it survived! <laughs> That's... Very silly. Okay. <laughs> I guess we'll recover it. Sure. We got point three science. Wow. <laughs> so that wasn't exactly a failure. <laughs> we recovered some of the remains. In the uh, like story mode, you'd be you'd want to collect those pieces for money because this stuff's expensive. Look, this is an eighteen thousand dollar rocket. Eighteen thousand Kerbal monies. Let's try this again. <laughs> Accelerate out of here. Look at us. Look at us. Look like a five on a side of a six sided die. <laughs> and fire. Who would have thought? There's the moon. We'll get there eventually. Love you, moon. 
See if we can't get a, a lander on there with, with Kerbins, and then hopefully we can get them back. Um, it's always difficult to kind of get to the moon and come back. So that's something that, that'll be a long, a long-term project. Okay, so let's wait until we get out of the atmosphere first. Because we, we're tumbling a little bit. Here we go. There we go. Now let's break away. Okay. So now that we've broken away, right, we can kind of sail up to our kind of cruising altitude. And the cool thing with this is that you can make maneuvers. So I'm going to accelerate, right, and make a maneuver. And you accelerate, you can change your, uh, how the, how you circle up. So one way to, I'm not really sure how to say it. Uh, let's see. So we, we can correct, right? So we want to kind of low altitude burn here. And so you, you make this node and you can get to the node and it'll show you like where your, air, your spacecraft needs to be pointed to actually properly meet that node and of course how much how many meters per second right so we need 2049 meters per second of thrust we have 2500 outside of atmosphere here we have plenty of liquid fuel we have plenty of electric charge so we, we're pretty much exactly where we need to be and we may actually have leftover fuel once we kind of you know stabilize the orbit so that would be something that we can just leave the rocket engine on board and then for later, if we need to move it, we can move it a little bit. But the, you know, sometimes there's not enough usable fuel in there to really matter. But for now, let's see what we can do. We've only got a minute and 45 to our torn node. Usually when you have a burn time, right, you want to burn at about half of the burn time early. So 18 seconds, at T-18 minus seconds, we're going to start to burn. Because this is it's treating it as if it's instantaneous. So it's not totally accurate, but it'll get you roughly where you want it to be. So this will be our first true orbit, um, and we'll, we'll get this done with Ratatoskar 2, because Ratatoskar 1 uh, didn't exactly, didn't exactly stay. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're on our burn, we're already there. Right, 2... One, we'll begin the burn. So you can already see how how, how our apoapsis is changing. And we're still burning. We're still burning. We've got 1,600 to go. We've got plenty of fuel left. So over the course of the next 20 seconds or so, this should zeroize. And to us, it just kind of oh yeah, we're burning in a direction. We're kind of just pointed out into space. But in reality, we're like falling toward the planet right now because gravity has us in its grip. And here we go, we're almost there. And there it is. So it's pretty much where we want it to be. So 375 and 132. So let's do... So we want 375 on both sides, right? Just to kind of make it even. I don't like lopsided orbits. That would be That's kind of silly. 375, so it's 268,000. Wow, that's like perfect. 311, where are we at? 375 right now? 375, oh, uh, 375, 500. 332. Okay, so generally that'll kind of swing us around. Yep, there we go. 375, 394. So I'm going to slow this down again. 375, 382. 380, 375. 376, 373, that's probably about as good as we're going to make it. So let's go ahead and move over to our burn point. So here, it's kind of important, right? So we have liquid fuel and oxidizer. Oxidizer helps us, you know, burn fuel. And electric charge is kind of most important for us. So we want to make sure we have a solar cell pointing toward the sun at all times. So looking at this, we have full probe control, we have good signal strength, we can transmit science data. Um, let's see where we are. Let's see if we can actually get some good science in here. I kind of doubt it, but let's just, let's just see. So yeah, nothing good here. So let's just 
shut the display off. Just close this guy. And let's just accelerate out over here. So this is going to be a one second burn, so it's not going to be too much of anything. So now we can see the moon, but we can't see the sun because we're behind the planet. It's pretty freaking cool. So anytime we like move the spaceship, it kind of uses this electric charge to maintain its stability system and it to u move the reaction wheels to kind of get us to spin around. So we've got 40 seconds until our burn, right? So we can actually accelerate that even further. Right, we don't have to wait that whole time, every time. But sometimes, you know, rather than warping, you just fast forward, and then you hit a planet. That happens sometimes, and you don't want to do that. All right, here it is, and there, there's a burn. Look at that. 76, 376. Good enough. <laughs> cool, so now we're in a pretty, pretty stable orbit. It's not perfect, but we've got some fuel left. We've got 300 meters per second left, so let's get back. Let's just watch the the sunrise over here. We come kind of around the corner. So the sun is kind of on the other side of Kerbin. We don't have anybody on board, so we never have to worry about that. All right, so we got to point away from the sun. That way we can get some good solar energy. Now maybe there's some stuff we can do in the experiments back here. On the night side of there we go. Yep. High space. Yep, so we can we won't get all of our data, right? But we'll get some. Let's transmit data. Right, the module dies when you when once you've sent your data back. But that's okay. So we're high over Kerbin now. Instead of twenty seven science, which you can fully recover. Uh and there there's the sunrise. Uh, transmitting, whew, transmitting science only gets you some. Doesn't get you everything. Yeah, measuring the temperature of space appears to be quite impossible, as there is no matter around to be either hot or cold, except the spacecraft and the thermometer itself. Probably not going to give the, uh, probably going to give the R&D guys something to think about. Yep. So now that we're in the sun, you know we're already gaining back our charge, but I'm uploading data, so we're losing it, right? And there we go. Good work, everybody, and uh, we will leave that there for today. We've gotten one probe into orbit. Next time, uh, we're going to work to get a probe into a polar orbit, uh, and that way, you know, we have something on over the top and the bottom of the planet, north and south, uh, rather than kind of around the equator. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more like this, subscribe. Uh, I'll be looking down in the comment section to see what kind of spacecraft you want me to build and, and, and what planets or, or moons you want me to go to, uh, what challenges you have for me. I absolutely adore this game. Well, thank you all so much, and I'll see you guys next time.